Urbanization is a leading cause of species extinction worldwide and a major threat to global biodiversity. The growling grass frog, Latoria reniformis, is a species of ground-dwelling tree frog native to southeastern Australia. It's listed as vulnerable to extinction, but isolated populations still persist in the Greater Melbourne area. Applying mathematical model-based risk assessment to problems in conservation biology, known as ecological modelling, can help to save it. Ecological modelling uses mathematics to understand how species and, and groups of species interact with each other. You can use those models to uh, also help predict how they might respond in the future to changes in the environment or to changes in management. The growling grass frog has suffered drastically from an introduced pathogen, the chytrid fungus, over recent decades. This pathogen reduces survival rates and leaves populations very sensitive to habitat loss, degradation and fragmentation, of which urbanisation is a leading cause. Decreased genetic diversity in the remaining population makes the growling grass frog more prone to inbreeding and less able to cope with the threats posed by urbanisation. The fieldwork now being used to inform conservation efforts to maintain populations is being led by Dr Jeff Hurd, an ecologist at Melbourne University. We've been working in this area given that it's an urban growth zone. In the early 2000s, we set up around about 200 sites. And since then, we've attempted to monitor those populations annually to get a sense of the change in their occupancy of different sites, so their extinction and colonisation dynamics, and how urbanisation and chytrid fungus is affecting those dynamics as well, to predict how they'll do in the future. We're interested in whether they're there or not, and we're interested in, in how many there are. A population is a group, a collection of individuals that belong to a particular species, and you can describe the changes in that population over time. Now a metapopulation is a population of populations. You have a group of populations that might interact with each other and the individuals will disperse from one place to the other and that helps you understand the spatial dynamics of the species, not just their dynamics over time. The models that we've got, we're able to represent each of the patches of, of habitat. And these patches are often ponds or quarry, old quarry sites or pools in creeks around Melbourne. Each of those sites becomes a population. You can then think about the presence or absence of the frog in that area and use the mathematical models to describe the probability that unoccupied sites become occupied and the probability that occupied sites become extinct. And by simulating those dynamics over time, you're able to predict what the likely future of that metapopulation will be. By doing repeat surveys, we can become a little bit sure about the absences. It also lets us estimate the probability of detecting the species when it's actually present, and you can build that into the models. And so those two processes, the colonisation probability and the extinction probability, are the fundamentals of the metapopulation model. Metapopulation modelling really started almost 50 years ago with a paper produced by Levens. And that model was a differential equation model that had two components. The rate at which patches become colonised and a rate at which patches become extinct. And this model was really very simple. The model is based on assuming that colonisation rate is the same for every patch and the extinction rate is the same for every patch. And the only factor really varying was the colonisation rate depended on how many other patches were colonised, uh, are currently occupied. More recently, Ilka Hansky developed a metapopulation model that allowed for differences between sites. And so this model then allowed some sites to have higher probabilities of colonisation, some sites to have higher probabilities of extinction. That model is, has formed the basis of the model that we developed uh, for the growling grass frog. And so each of the 
patches, each of the individual populations within our metal population now has a unique probability of extinction that depends on the characteristics of that particular site. And then when the patches become extinct, each patch has a unique probability of being colonised that depends on the proximity to other occupied patches and how many other occupied patches exist in the landscape. The probability of extinction at a particular time can be modelled as a function of population size and in some cases immigration rate. The probability of colonisation is modelled as a function of the number of immigrants. In practice, many other variables such as patch size, distance between patches and properties of the surrounding landscape are used to determine these probabilities. These variables are used to determine the probabilities of extinction or colonisation at a particular time. The models we've built have been based on what's called logistic regression. It's, it's a well-established statistical method of relating the probability of an event to a, uh, a set of explanatory variables. The size of the pond, how well connected that pond is, because a well-connected pond is less likely to go extinct, and, and attributes of the site can also be included in those sort of models. So, you know, the amount of vegetation in an area could be an important driver for the uh, probability that a site will uh, remain extant or will go extinct over a one year time step. And so we say it's occupied this year, what's the chance of it being occupied next year? Or it might be uh, empty this year, what's the chance of it becoming colonised in the following year? There's a really big future for mathematical modelling and ecology. Some of the biggest areas of ecology are based around mathematical modelling. We're working to use this model to make better management decisions, particularly for this growling grass frog. Conserving our natural history, our cultural identity is actually really important. We might not realise it, but our food, our water supply, our supply of firewood and fuel heating for a lot of the world's population actually relies on species. And so we can't really just take it for granted because, because humans actually rely on the biodiversity around us much more than we actually realise. So conserving it for our own self-interest is, is good, not just conserving it for the, the sake that it's a fantastic frog.